Good morning. It's Friday, May 6, 2022. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, Despite Wickedness. And our scripture is Ezekiel's Prophecy, Chapter 20. As for you, O people of Israel, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Go right ahead and worship your idols, but sooner or later you will obey me and will stop bringing shame on my holy name by worshiping idols. For on my holy mountain, the great mountain of Israel, says the Sovereign Lord, the people of Israel will someday worship me and I will accept them. There I will require that you bring me all your offerings and choice gifts and sacrifices. When I bring you home from exile, you will be like a pleasing sacrifice to me, and I will display my holiness through you as all the nations watch. Then, when I have brought you home to the land I promised with a solemn oath to give your ancestors, you will know that I am the Lord. You will look back on all the ways you have defiled yourselves and will hate yourselves because of the evil you have done. You will know that I am the Lord, O people of Israel, when I have honored my name by treating you mercifully in spite of your wickedness. I, the Sovereign Lord, have spoken. The Sovereign Lord is the creator of the universe. Despite the wickedness of his chosen people Israel, God was not only willing to forgive, he promised it as a matter of prophetic certainty. In all prophetic utterance by prophets, apostles, and metaphorical stories, there is typically a current application and a future expectation. We often miss that because we cannot see the future, even five minutes ahead. It's like two mountains, the closer one, our current day, larger than the one behind it, the future prediction. We are at ground level, so to speak. Our sight is limited. Prophetic utterance is God, the creator of time and space, and is therefore not governed by either time or space. God is above time and space, as a helicopter hovering above the two mountains, and he can see what we cannot. When the God above speaks, we who are governed by time, space, and the expectations of their Creator should pay attention. God reminded Israel of their wickedness, worshipping idols out of a fear of not fitting in with the surrounding cultures and dishonoring their calling to be God's special chosen ones to proclaim God's love to the world. But the warning threat of accountability also came with a prophecy that they would get past the regret of despising their own sins to be forgiven and restored to right relationship with God. In our 21st century culture, there is enough identifying with ungodly culture going on, even in the church, to be like a second mountain behind the first of Ezekiel's time. The church of the third millennium is no different than the first 2,000 years. We leave our first love of Jesus in the dust, like the church at Ephesus, which John the Apostle wrote about in Revelation chapter 2. There was also a prophetic warning in that message. For you today, prophecy is not about sensationalism or all about God getting even with us for our wickedness. Prophecy is God's despite of our wickedness to proclaim the love and providence of our Lord for lost and wayward sheep. It's an open invitation to come back to the purpose for which we were created, an intensely intimate relationship with a God who loves us supremely. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road with Jesus. Have a blessed day.